a conversation we had with Dep Deputy Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan. He was at our Hask retreat about a month ago. And you know, over the past few years, we've been hearing the stories about half of our military aircraft that can't fly due to maintenance issues. He told us a story about when he was in the private sector, and obviously he brings a lot of expertise in that area, about uh, an example if a Southwest plane were to land with a problem, let's say, it, I think he used a, a wing flap. They could have that turned around, order the part, get it in, fix it, and fly in 24 hours. But put that same plane in a military skin, you might be looking at six months to get the part and another three months to fix it. First of all, is that even close to accurate? And uh, if so, you mentioned in your opening remarks about adopting commercial principles to help deal with uh, our acquisition reform. Is this an area that we can improve on? And uh, what would you say to that analogy and, and what is being done to help improve that situation? Yeah, Congressman, I'm glad you brought up uh, keeping aircraft up in the air because it's a big part of the Air Force's business. It's also an area where we spend a lot of money, and I, I think it is ripe for, for new emphasis of research and development. Uh, one thing that I've, I've seen, at least at a, at a cursory level coming into this job, is that uh, airworthiness and safety certification is something that will be a, a challenge for using things like 3D printing or agile manufacturing. Who will say that the, the thing you want to use from commercial industry, whether it's a practice or a part, is safe? And so uh, we're trying to think of ways to get around, uh, not get around, but to, to navigate our safety processes, but still allow us to get data on things that are made with, with advanced, uh, advanced processes like agile manufacturing. And we're even kicking around ideas like calling a plane with 3D printed parts an X-plane, which is a process we have for development side of the house. When something can't be certified as absolutely safe because it's new and cutting edge, you slap an X on it and you can go fly it and get the data you need to certify it's safe. To my knowledge, we've never done that on the sustainment side, but we spend a lot of money there. So I really think this is an area that's ripe for new thinking, new investment, and expect it to be an area of focus for me in this job. Okay. Uh, is he correct in, in the amount of time? Does it really take that long on military aircraft? Uh, well, well, sir, I, uh, if the Deputy Secretary was sharing from his past experience, I certainly, uh, certainly trust uh, his expertise in this area. It is true that it takes us much longer uh, than commercial industry for a variety of reasons. Sometimes our planes are a lot more complicated than theirs. Sure. But just because we have extra hurdles that we have to cross doesn't mean we can't adopt best practices from them. G give, a, give us a few examples of those hurdles. What are they? What is the bureaucracy that slows you down so much? Well, parts obsolescence is one issue. So we get backlog on parts, but we need it. We need it from the particular vendor who made it because that's what's safety certified. And we have a lot of airplanes that are grounded currently waiting on backlog parts that we currently can't get easily because they're not made anymore. That's an area you could imagine, well, if you could make that part yourself and had the data rights to it, which is another issue, that maybe you could sweep that backlog. And in some cases, we have planes that are going to be down for months, even close to years, waiting on parts. Another is just switching to predictive maintenance. Uh, we wait for things to break, and then we fix them. The commercial airline uh, industry uh, predicts when things are going to break, and they fix them ahead of time. Uh, so that's an area we should look at. And obviously, they're very concerned about safety as well. So we wouldn't be flying, sir, if they weren't. So uh, they're, they're just as concerned about safety. I think they're just using more modern technology to achieve it. Uh, and even though our mission is more complicated, there's, there's a lot of things that we can adopt from them. And it'd be great to make sustainment as cool as doing development so we get the same talent in the workforce focusing on that side. Developing new things is cool. I loved doing that in my past job. But sustaining things and keeping them up in the air is necessary for readiness. So it needs the equal focus from us. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Roper. I yield back. Sir, sir could I maybe add one? Oh, uh, absolutely. Sir, and, and I just brought, brought some toys along. This is actually a 3D parted, uh, 3D printed nacelle to a V-22 that's fully flight certified. And so at the working level between the Air Force and the Navy, because we have a lot of aircraft as well, creating the standards by which we can then 3D print what we need. You know, and some, some are flight critical, uh, so you need to make sure you've got really tight standards. Some are not, maybe the valve on this thing we printed design and flew in, in five days and we were having a problem with one of our masks. That's a little different than this, but we are looking at how do you think about, how do you separate the different parts in their criticality? How do you create the certification regimes? And then how do you then operate at speed? And, and as Dr. Roper said, there's tremendous opportunity to 
be more operationally responsive and more cost effective. Thank you. Mr. Langen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank all.